What's up guys? We're back with a set of fully 3D printed clamps. They're made out of PLA. As always, they print without support. In this video, we're gonna go through some of the design considerations, how to set it up on your print bed, and then how to assemble it. Here are the clamps. We've got three sizes, and it's not just scaled up from one size. Uh, they are all a little bit different, but they're roughly the same thing as if you scaled one. So what we wanted was a really rigid C shape here. And my attempts to make a normal C clamp where the threaded rod is out here, you ended up with a very wide clamp. The rod bowed very easily. Just wasn't a very strong clamp. PLA is not the greatest clamp material, but if you just need small light clamping, these are pretty excellent. We made the thread as large as possible and kind of a major structural member of the thing. Moving to the back over here, and this nut is what drives it up and down. It moves this whole carriage. We have a problem with the, the C shape actually bending as you clamp harder, and then your faces are no longer parallel. So we added this feature that looks like this. We've got an hourglass shape in there that allows us to have a pivot. This is a print in place feature. And now as we crank this closed and this starts to bend up, we'll pivot on this hourglass feature and allow the face to stay parallel for a long time. You can see the this kind of decorative trough that follows the kind of shape of it. This is on both sides of the park on all sizes. And this was an attempt to get some more wall layers in here, really just more thicker surfaces. And then on the inside, you can see out of these channels. And this again is they're diamond shaped and they run up the middle of the thing. So rather than being hollow or have much thinner infill in there that's not necessarily pointed the right way. We get more lines of filament that, that follow this L shape, and that should give us some extra strength. You can see that these are in two pieces, and they've got this diamond shaped piece with a pin in it. We started with, there was no cross pin, and these fit together nice and snug, and they have a beautiful fit, and they, they move as a single piece, and they work great as a guide up and down this. But as you crank it hard, you started to see the seam separate. So we added this, diamond shape feature that we can still print without any support or anything. And now when you get the two sides pushed together, you cross pin it. Now they can't come apart and they work great. You can crank it hard enough to bend this pretty good, but it's still strong. I have never cracked one. Um, even this is, is pretty thin, but the distance across the outsides of this is kind of your, your wheelbase to keep this straight. Early ones had a lot of clearance and the, the amount of rotation of this just slop was too big for my liking. And I figured we've got a 3D printer, let's tighten it up and have it fit just the way we want. So we tightened everything. We've got half a millimeter clearance on these threads. They're, they're just custom threads that we added a lot of space to. Got good overlap. We don't have a lot of teeth in here. So we don't have the, the four you would normally want, but it looks like we've got about three, but nice big overlaps and big chunky teeth on them. So they're pretty strong. The little guy prints and like an hour and 40 minutes. So they're really quick if you need a bunch of clamps for something small. And they, they're pretty resilient, but they do have a, you know, a material limit that's really gonna limit how strong you can clamp with them. Here's the build plate setup. I'm showing all three clamps here. They're all the same. We wanna point the post and the socket up on the carriage pieces. We want the axis of the threaded nut to be vertical. The pins need to be sideways and the, the threading piece needs to be on its side. I think the ones we printed for this video had three wall loops that were 15% infill and PLA printed on 0.12 millimeter layer height. That was plenty. More infill will certainly make it stronger. More wall loops will also make it stronger. Layer height may not even need to be that precise, but you know if you want to be different from that, it'll probably still work. The clearance on these Features that go around the outside of a male thread are pretty picky. I put them pretty tight, so they might be snug, but as soon as you move them a little bit, they seem to loosen them right up. These pivots should move right off the build plate. That's about it. They pretty quick. We've printed this in all three sizes here. Each clamp has the same types of parts, and there's going to be five. Two of them make up the moving jaw. One of them is the threaded part that makes up the opposing jaw with the little swivel in it. The nut and then the cross pin that keeps these guys from coming apart. This is the bottom of the sliding jaw, and this is the top. So this pad faces this, and this is the easiest way to put them together. You put this on, then you thread your 
not a little ways, then you push this to here and you get this guy on and now you just squeeze this down. Now this works, but I'll show you what happens. So the swivel goes and it'll pivot to keep these faces parallel as you close it. And as you crank it, this is gonna bend. There's nothing you can do about it. And this is gonna droop on the bottom. We kept the faces parallel. If you crank really hard, you'll start to force this open. So that's the reason for this guy. And you just line them up with the hole. Just kind of push down on a flat surface. This will be perfectly flush on both sides. And that goes through this hole on the outside and this hole on the inside. Every one of them has this. So they all line up like that. And then you stuff a pin through it so that they can't separate this way. That's it. We'll put the other two together real quick. So that's it. Pretty simple. These guys print quick and they should be pretty strong.